Welcome to Headline News 24/7. Please click like and subscribe. Melania just made announcement. New York Times names her possibly greatest floatus ever. This is unbelievable. It's like the world might be coming to an end. No, not really. The New York Times, in an op-ed piece titled "Melania Trump Could Be Our Greatest First Lady." which was written by a known Trump hater like the majority of so-called journalists from the NEET is bound to raise eyebrows. Here is the article via the New York Times. Maybe someday, when the history of Donald Trump's presidency is written, we'll pinpoint the start of this week as his pivot into complete derangement and come up with a pithy name for it. Maybe we'll call it Melania Monday. We'll note that on August 20, 2018, the First Lady, again with a pussy bow, publicly chided cyberbullies at the same time that her husband ranted and raged on Twitter, likening Robert Mueller to Joseph McCarthy and demonstrating a grasp of history commensurate with his grip on civility. We'll admire the wickedness of her announcement, just hours later, that she'd be making a solo trip, her farthest and flashiest yet as an official ambassador, to Africa, whose nations the president can't pronounce, let alone respect. She didn't choose the destination randomly, throwing a dart at a map. She chose it defiantly throwing shade at her husband. Surely Melania Trump is getting under his skin. Certainly she's making the effort. If she would just turn these fitful baby steps into full-length strides, she might finally undo him and set us free. Melania the savior. A pussy boku. Stranger things have happened. Less exhilarating fantasies have been born. And is it really so far-fetched? To judge by his tweets, tantrums and apparent belief that Rudy Giuliani is an appropriate advocate. Donald Trump teeters at the precipice of incoherence and self-destruction, needing only a shove. Who best to administer it but a spouse with her own, separate bedroom in the White House and her own, separate hotel suite when they travel? She inches ever closer to open contempt for him. She finds increasingly clever ways to show it. And it's a perfect wedding of patriotism and payback for all the humiliations that he has heaped on her. This first lady thing clearly flummoxed her at first. It's a ludicrous job. You're supposed to make a difference without making waves, find a passion while veiling your convictions and smile blithely through a ceaseless forensic examination of your every accessory. It's infantilizing. It's objectifying. If a presidential administration were a sedan, the first lady would be its hood ornament. If it were a manse, she'd be the topiary bracketing the front stoop. Usually Melania Trump was absent topiary. America had a denuded front stoop. And we made hasty assumptions. When she initially announced her anti-cyberbullying campaign in a speech in November 2016, we thought that she was out to lunch. Did she not see the contradiction? For the president's first State of the Union address, she wore a white pantsuit that served as a sartorial reminder of suffragists and of Hillary Clinton. This month, after he questioned LeBron James's intelligence in a tweet, her spokeswoman released a statement that asserted the First Lady's admiration for James's work with at-risk children in his hometown, Akron, Ohio. Melania was possibly interested in visiting the school there that James had helped to start, the statement said. And my colleagues Katie Rogers and Maggie Haberman recently reported that during a trip overseas last month, the president had a fit because the First Lady's television on Air Force One was tuned to CNN, not his beloved Fox News. Was CNN an accident or a provocation? Well, in a public response to the incident, Melania's spokeswoman made clear that the First Lady watches any channel she wants. I'm not sure what to make of that I really don't care, do you? Jacket that she wore on her way to a detention center for migrant children in Texas. It's the rosebud of our time. But what if the message was that she didn't mind if we interpreted her behavior as a rebuke of her husband's? Marriage is psyops, it's not virgin territory, but the stage and stakes here are epic. On Monday, as the Washington Post's James Homan noted, she used the phrase global society in both her spoken remarks about cyberbullying and her written remarks about the trip to Africa, which she praised for its rich culture. Her husband, of course, treats globalists and globalism as dirty words, and some of his shithole countries are on that richly cultured continent. She'll be going there without him. Other first ladies beautified highways, promoted reading, planted squash. This one could abbreviate a nightmare. She's in a situation that her predecessors weren't on the arm of an overlord who needs undermining, and it's her invitation to greatness, or at least her prompt for an itinerary tailored to taunt. I urge that visit to James's school. Bring Don Lemon along. I suggest lunch dates with Maxine Waters, Aperol spritzes with Angela Merkel and pajama parties with Nancy Pelosi. And pussy bows and pantsuits for days on end. They're the threads of a revolution. Don't be fooled, 
If you took the time the time to stomach reading the whole article above you will see it's not an actual praise of anything. It's just one more mere try to take down our president. The man the majority of us voted for in the 2016 election. But what perhaps makes this article special is that he comes at him by forwarding a conspiracy theory which actually claims First Lady Melania Trump is trying to get under her husband's skin. That she is contempt for him and if only she would turn it up a notch she might finally undo him and set us free. Free us from what? A world without ISIS? Peace in the Korean Peninsula? An unemployment rate not seen in decades? A GDP which former President Barack Hussein Obama said was unattainable in today's world? A consumer confidence not seen since the 90s? Is this the evil they want to rid us from? I think we can all rest assured that if Hillary didn't have contempt for Bill, and Jackie didn't have contempt for John, President Trump has nothing to worry about since he has done nothing compared to what those two characters put their wives through. The author of this piece, Frank Bruni has been with The Times since 1995 and has actually held a variety of jobs in the field of journalism, which in today's world seems to have opened contempt for people like you and I. He was White House reporter, Rome bureau chief, and chief restaurant critic before becoming a columnist in 2011 for The Need. Maybe he should just stick to being a restaurant critic, which I am sure he didn't excel at either outside of his own elitist circles. That was the news. We thought you might be interested in knowing about this. Please click like and subscribe. Thank you.